back at it again. Um, this is going to be the tutorial on airbrushing and painting. I've already done the jaw shark or the diorama. I still need to do a little cleanup work on him. And I'm going to do that right now. We've got Mr. Quint on standby right over here. About his arm pieces here. And Mr. Quint. And of course these are going to go in here like that. I have to drum them down a little bit to get them fixed. But I'm not going to do it right now. I'm just going to paint him up. Uh, that's going to be the objective for this, is just to paint him up. I'm going to do that right now. Plus, I have to get his um, machete blade done. And I've got some metallic paint here for that. That's going to be hand painted. But the first thing I'm going to show you is on the shark, some of the teeth need to be. There's too much red paint in the mouth. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take some of that off. And I'm going to show you how to do that. And it's a very simple technique. Just entails a Q-tip. And a little bit of alcohol. Move some of this stuff out of the way. We're getting back to the airbrushing here in a minute. That's a Q-tip. Uh, you know what? Let's take that off. I'm going to the alcohol, dip it in there. Get it on there. Now all we're going to do, very lightly, take the alcohol and rub away some of the paint on the teeth. Now I don't want to take all of it off because I do want there to be some blood on it. However, it has to be where you can see them as teeth. And still have some blood and gore and stuff encrusted in there. So it won't come off entirely. But it will be coming off some of the blood itself. And of course I've got to enhance. Take a little bit of blood off of here. Off of the nose. Because there's two orange up here. And that has to do with the paint that I put on here. And like I said, there's ways that you can do this without disrupting the flow or the texture of your model. You know, the swirls. And I can always go back in and put more paint on there if needed. So, I'm just gently taking the alcohol rug and removing paint from the affected areas. And it's helping to accent a little bit of the shark natural color. At the same time, it's leaving blood swirls and stuff, which can also be part of the scenario. Now, on this particular model, he does have a couple of scars here, which I'm going to accent very lightly with uh, red paint. Um, but I do want to scale back this 
blood and gore and kind of bring out the snout just a little bit. I don't want it looking like he's wearing lipstick. That's the whole thing. It's to not have all this red gore gushing here because it looks like he's wearing lipstick. And the inside of Shark's mouth is pink, but not the lip. So, I'm trying to stand this up where you guys can see it at the same time that I'm doing this. And I need to walk over here and get some more alcohol with the other one. Be very careful with this because this is a, a, a fragile resin model. If you put too much pressure on these teeth, they will break off. And they are somewhat hard to glue back in. So what you want to do is just take that hard line off. Where it looks like you got lip thick and just swirl that around. And it makes it look more natural to a blood effect if you want a bloody mouth and just go all in here and take all that blood off but don't take it off off just swirl it around and look a nice little swirl effect and then take your finger and kind of run over it Breathe it out. Let's go inside the jaw and get some of the teeth out. And see, you can still take the pain away from the teeth. And it will still, it will show the teeth, but it also shows the mouth of gore. And it, same thing with the bottom. If you can, Try to take the Q-tip and go from the bottom and move up away from the tooth because then you're bringing it up from the bottom and you're leaving the gore on the bottom. But you're also cleaning the tooth in the process and you're not disrupting the paint flow on the lower jaw. And it goes for all the teeth that you want to accent a uh, teeth. And there's a multitude of teeth in there. There's also some in behind, but nobody really sees that because the way the model is. And you just kind of look at it at different angles. Kind of work some judgments and, and, and whatnot in a way. 
what you want to be there and what you want to take away. And I think what I want to do is I want to hit this nose just a little bit more black. So I'm going to get the nose I still want to work. Kind of blur it out a little bit. A shark's natural coloring is gray in the water because when you have blue in the water, but when it comes out of the water, it's very dark. So it does have kind of like a dark, almost black color to it. Uh, again, um, and like I said before, this is a version that is not going to be entirely 100% movie accurate. Kind of my natural reinterpretation of it. Always wipe your hands off before you touch a model with alcohol, otherwise you'll bring off some of the paint that you had on there before. Even if it is dry and it's not sealed. Now on this under jaw, which I can take off, I think I'm going to slide that out. Couldn't have been making it easier for me to work with. I really want these teeth to be the highlight of this piece. So, I'm leaving some gore in here. At the same time, I'm just pulling the teeth up. Just run that q tip right along the outside edge, uh, along the top and the middle. You can do the back side if you want, but not too many people are going to see the inside of the model. I think I will just for tutorial purposes. Which makes it look nicer. And of course you can get a clean keycap. Every now and again reach for a clean keycap. A whole bunch on hands here. I bought them in good dollar store and bought them packs of uh, 100,500. Whatever they come in. Notice how I'm taking the key tip with the alcohol and brushing away from the teeth. Rushing away. Wiping away. It's okay if it's a little wet, it'll die and evaporate. It won't uh it won't damage the model. Same thing here on the side. Like I said, you don't have to do this, but I think it looks nice. And this is just my personal preference to try to make it look as nice as possible. So your end results aren't going to be too bad. Now on the bottom part here, I do want to take some of this off. Because there again, I want some of the shark skin texture to show up. And you can do that two ways. You can do that with this. 
And it also took a piece of towel. After you do the, the swirls, and wipe it off. The trick is, is when you're lightening colors, and you're making things light, and you still want to leave some residuals on there for effects. You swirl them around, get the effects that you want. And you want to do it in swirl pattern. You don't want to do it in wobbly and leave it nasty and, and, and Well, you gotta remember, the shark has been in battle. He's not gonna be clean, he's not gonna be neat. He's not gonna have precise lines. So, I'm just lightening the blood color a little bit on some areas. So I'm just really lightly wiping it down. Not taking it off, but just lightening it up. And just kind of making a nice swirl pattern, leaving some of the blood so you can see the residual blood on it. At the same time, you still get the natural colors of the shark's lower jaw. So, there's the lower jaw part. I might take this up just a little bit here. Swirl this out, make this a little bit more color. Whoop, about to lose it. So the thing is, I don't want Bruce to look like he has makeup on, like he has lipstick. And when you have a heavy line of paint like that, and it's just in one pattern, it does look like it's lipstick. And that's where you want to kind of have a natural effect. Weather it back just a little bit. And so you still have the blood effect on there without any definitive paint lines. Same thing here. One little bit of gore and crustacean, but not too much. Go for the shark's natural color. So there you go. That's the lower jaw part right there. I don't know how well that's showing up for the teeth and the definition stuff. Okay, we'll set this aside. We'll take Mr. Bruce here, and we'll do the cleanup on the upper side as well. Because this overspray of paint here has kind of taken some of the effect of his natural coloring away. What you do is just gently brush that off. Lightly, even though this is dried, like I said, just a little bit of alcohol and a little bit of a little bit of pressure, not too much, just a little bit. <clears throat> Same thing for the inside of the mouth here. You can take that off because the inside of the jaws are white to a degree, but you want a little bit of weathering on them. What I'm going to do here is put him upside down for a second. Go on the inside of the jaw here and just lighten it up, take it back to the white a little bit. Not too heavy. And see how the alcohol removes the paint, but it doesn't remove it and remove it and make it dark white. 
kind of leaves a wet effect, kind of like a and then you can go back over with this paper towel and just blot it and just blot it like that and it kind of leaves a natural a natural effect there where it's not um, totally stark white and you still have some of the blood and the coloring and you go on the other side and do the same thing and I'm just gonna do that here right now kind of hard to do it in front of the camera show you all the angles without uh, and holding it at the same time so I'm just taking the q-tip and just brushing back the blood and gore and stuff and just scaling it down just a little bit and take your paper towel and just blot it I don't want to wipe it because if you wipe it you'll take all the paint off if you blot it it leaves a natural uh, pattern and then of course you want to lighten it to where it matches this one so you want to go just a little bit lighter if you can leave the blood swirls in there one more time if you're not getting the lightness that you want you can rub just a little bit harder but try not to rub too hard or else you'll take it all off and if you have a good amount of alcohol on your swab you can swirl that around to get the effect that you want try to match that as close as I can on each side for coloring doing a little bit of swirl effect here and rubbing it in because I want it to be white but I don't want it to be stark white because I want it to be a natural coloring effect for it but not take all the burnish and stuff off of it so I'm just lightly going back around and taking it off a little bit and then after you do that, and just kind of blot it. And then that leaves kind of a burnished effect right there where you still have different colorations and you got white and it's just, it's an unbroken line basically. Because sharks don't have natural lines. They have an unbroken kind of scattered like line there and I'm just going to rub this a little bit maybe bring it up just a little whiter not too white but just a little bit if you do bring it up too white you can always go back and hit it with a smattering of, 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 of black and just kind of rub it in it dulls it down a little bit same thing on this side I take the color and just go back in there and just, just rub it a little bit. And just do like little circles, swirl circles, 
I know if it's prison, check every once in a while. Check it, you look at your other side and check where you want to be. It doesn't have to match, but, you know, it is kind of nice when it does look about even and such. You have that side, you have this side, and it's probably not done that well. Uh, I think I'll leave it like that. I'm going to take this scarring effect off of the, the jaw here. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. And that's where a Q-tip is very effective. Because if you have a little line like this, right here, you want to get back. Just rub that a little bit harder and it goes away. The swirl marks that you make in this thing when you bring it back, you can swirl those in just like you take your fingers and just kind of rub them a little bit. It leaves a natural effect. So it actually enhances it rather than take away from it. So. I'm not too happy with the snout. I think I want it a little bit wider. Oop. Too much alcohol. There's no really wrong way to do these kind of things. It's imagining what you want as an artist or what your customer wants. That's what counts. And the object is to make it look as good as possible in the natural way. Because these kits, unfinished, probably run, oh, 300, 350, 350. When you do a top-notch paint job on these things, you can get them for about seven, eight hundred dollars. People will, collectors will pay a good high-priced penny for a well-done, <coughs> well-painted piece. <clears throat> so, there's a little bit of enhancements. I'm going to set this aside. I may go back to that later. Uh, but for the moment, I'm just going to set them aside. And let me put this somewhere where it's not going to get damaged. There we go. Now, we'll go to the machete. We'll do this. Now, what we're going to do is basically just take a little bit of metallic paint. This is going to be one of the hand-painted parts. And I've got to find a good brush up here. The problem with me is I have so many brushes and stuff I use, and, and I don't really keep track of my clean brushes and my dirty brushes and just kind of Use them and put them in the in the uh, in the cleaner, and then just take them out and put them back out. Now this is a dark metallic, so just going inside the ink into the cap where it's really dark and kind of you know do that. I'm going to try this and see how this looks and so far as the color goes. Let's put this on there because I have a quint knife up on the wall that I got from a friend of mine, Corey Kaufman. He actually had one or two of these, and I managed to buy one from him. And uh, he was nice enough to sell me a real French machete, which is the actual Quint knife used, style of Quint knife used in the movie. I'm 
just painting this by hand. I very rarely paint by hand anything. Um, I'm not liking the way that comes out. I may go with a spray on this one. Let me try this with the spray. See how this looks with the spray. And darken up the blade like this and make it look like a dark blade with a spray. So that's the thing. When you have this and you grab it with your fingers, you end up and ah, you end up touching it and stuff like that. So I'm gonna have to put it down. Put it on the screen. Oop, and it blows off. Ooh, and it blows off. Well, this one is not turning out so well, so I'm not sure exactly how to do this. Um, I'm going to wipe this off. I'm just going to leave some of the effects. I will probably look into some of my other paints and come up with something that's more of a steel color. Let's see if I've got steel here. How about steel gray? <sighs> See, Peter Gray works. Wait a minute, I've got metallic down here. I might have some steel colors. It's a sterling silver. Um, that might work. Let's see if we can try and sterling silver and maybe make this pop out a little bit. Try a little bit of this. Not really making that much of an effect, but paint one side, leave it. Off to the side, paint another one. Paint the other side when it dries. Okay, now Mr. Quint. Now, as you know, Mr. Quint has a blue shirt, black pants, and a green jacket. So what we're going to do is first, we'll take care of his pants. And I'm going to spray black on these pants. Now what I'm trying to do here is have highlights because they're wet and I want to kind of make the wrinkles and creases pop without having it become a flat black color. I need a little bit of black. And then a drop of alcohol. That's a drop or two of alcohol. Make sure it bubbles up. Check your flow. Make sure you got a good smooth flow. 
I'll stick them and just lightly spray in a, in a nice even pattern. I'm going to spray the whole thing, even the stumps, although you don't see everything as one. I'm just doing smooth strokes on here, smooth even strokes like this, because I want the wrinkles and such to be highlighted a little bit darker than the rest, but I don't want to do a flat black overall base paint. In other words, if it's flat black, you lose the details, so I'm just kind of stroking it a little bit. making sure that it's covered like so. Don't really want to go too heavy on some areas. So it's going to be actually a charcoal gray with black highlights because this um, paint is actually called smoke gray. It's a charcoal smoke black, I'm sorry. When it dries, hopefully, the highlights will come out well enough for beating up on me. If I need to go back in there and make them darker, I can. I'm doing a little research and find out what color his belt was. Because I'm just going to do the shirt, the jacket, the pants. The belt and all the little fine details are going to have to wait until after. Okay, so we'll let this dry. And if you can see some of the highlights and stuff from the pattern that I sprayed, you can see that some of the wrinkles and stuff are going to get accented highly more so than the rest of the pants. Um... So we'll set that aside for a second, and we know that he's got flesh-colored hands, and he's got a green army jacket. And I'll set this over here so they can get accidentally messed up. So then I will go to my favorite color over here in my arsenal, which is uh, moss green. My favorite Godzilla color, anyway. Smoke black, uh, moss green, got moss green open somewhere around here, There's moss green. It's just open, no, it's not open. Have a little thing of moss green, we'll try that and see. So now what we have to do is clean out the brush. I need paper towels. Need more paper towels. I'm gonna make sure to I use this as my acetone holder. When I want to really give my good brush a good cleaning, um, I pour a little acetone in there out of the whiskey bottle. Oop, see too much. Jim Beam Vanilla. Although it says Jim Beam Vanilla, do not drink it. It's acetone. I also have an old granddad bottle down here. Um, you just spray the acetone in the, in the brush, back it up, bubble it out, make sure all the color and stuff comes out. And be sure to get all that color out. Um, sometimes what I'll do is I'll take my needle out of my airbrush. Just loosen the back, strip it out. I also have to get a clean needle. So I'd probably change needles for this. Bubble this out and just let it spread. And let it spread out.
cut. Now let me set this aside for a second. We're going to go get another needle. <coughs> Let's see, I have my needles in the container somewhere here, and I don't know where they are. They're in the jar. And this is the fun part about me. You see everything that goes on, mistakes and all. I've got a jar with needles in it. My jar. And I'm looking right at it and I can't see it. Now, ah, here it is. Right here. That's what I do is I'll take my needles and I'll put them in a jar of acetone. I'll take out the old needle. Got a new needle, put the old needle in there, clean it. That's just the jar of acetone. I'm going to take the new needle, wipe it off. Oops. Put it in the brush. clip back on there, tighten that up, spread it out, back this out, make sure I get the chamber cleaned out, that's the thing, you want to have your paint chamber cleaned out pretty good before you put more paint in there. So he's already dry in here, so I can probably hit it with a little bit more. I should try to use that and a little bit of acetone in there. Put, put some swirl effects in there. It won't take the paint off. Let's put some more effects in there. Okay. Set that aside. Now, we have got this completely cleaned out. I'll take a little bit of smoke green, uh, moss green here. This is an army green color. I'm going to take the arm by the hand and just hit it with some green. Same thing, there's effects and, and, and swirls and colors and stuff like that that you can do with this where you can hit it and highlight it and darken it however you want. I'm not worried about getting paint on the hands. I always take that off. So you got a good green arm right there. Let that dry. Set that aside and we'll get this one. I'm just doing round in motions. I'm just going around and around, like in little half circles or little tiny touch circles. It doesn't do anything much. It just disperses the paint from being a regular pattern. Let that dry. Of course, we want to get his jacket. I'm just going to put a light coat on this one. It'll 
be very careful and precise when you go down to some of the channels. The entire back is going to be green. And we've got some moisture in this line because it's kind of beating up. Get all the cracks and crevices, get everything you can. Now this back is beating up because there's moisture in the lines. So I'm going to pull that moisture out of there because it's blotted up. It's like putting paint spatters in there that don't need to be in there because it separates. So you can just take a paper towel and wipe those out and leave the dark pieces and the recesses and stuff like that that go in there. Because when that dries it'll it'll it'll, it'll spray over it. So, so far we have his jacket, lightly down his pants, so I've already touched it right there where it does that. Not by any means finish, it needs to dry, and then when it dries you can go back in there and, 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 and highlight it and do it again. There are a couple of areas, and then you're hitting spray paint on some of the facial features. You can get in there with a Q-tip, take it off, that type of thing. It's not that, uh, not that big a deal. And block some of the recesses of paint off of here because it's speckling up. This paint started to beat up. There's moisture in the line, so I'm just going to wipe it off. I'm not going to take it all off. Just going to wipe it down, leave the green on there. Just want to make sure to get all that paint that was beaded up off of there. Because what I leave on there will actually become enhanced when you go back and respray it. Is it text and definition?
The objective is to try to get the textures to pop, the wrinkles and stuff, without letting it be all one flat base color. So I may also, after this dries and sets up, I'll go back in and do a little light black spraying over it to kind of bring some of that out. Um, on this one, I did overspray a little bit of green too, so I'm going to take that off. And that I'm going to take all the way back. Because it didn't come out quite like I wanted it to in so far as the texturing and stuff. Let me just take off the highlights. And you can rub down the highlights like that. And if you want to go back in there and spray those with like black and just hit it with black. It'll, it'll like some the wrinkles and stuff like that and make it look. Let's see if I can show you that real quick. We'll clean this brush out again. Different ways to do this. Um, my way may not be the way of other modelers and stuff like that, but you know, I find what I do works for me, and that's good. So, different artists have different ways of doing things. And like I said, there's no right way to do it. No one set way. It's what's in the artist's mind and the concept of the artist. like to share what I'm doing so other people see that I do it and they know that oh okay you know here's how he does it this interesting tip or trick or something like that. I haven't gone to any art schools and studied anything or anything this all comes from I learned how to airbrush when we were doing taxidermy and uh, you know it's, it's just constantly airbrushing has what made me has what has made me a uh, better artist in the fact that I just consistently do it again and again and again and again and again and again until I get the right effect that I like. Um, I painted that jar shark five times. Um, the first time I really liked it, but when I was trying to put the model together just to get the color scenario, it didn't match. And then I tried to blend it and do all that, and it didn't match. And it just kept coming up mismatched. So I just put the model together, stripped it all back, and then did the entire thing under one uh, paint thing. So let's throw a little black on here and see what happens. I'll have to his pants here in the spot, so. The black will actually darken it up into a darker green color. So that is a good thing. You don't do it really heavily, you just do it lightly. The only problem is on the back here. We've got those spots that kept coming up with beads. So we'll have to do that again. So sometimes when you do these, you have to do it two or three times before you get it right. Uh, this is not really... Only the people that have been doing airbrushing for like 20 plus years or so have been able to knock it out in like one setting and do everything right the first time. Um, things do happen where you... 
uh, come up with problems, issues, that type of thing. The only difference between them and me is you see everything on this. You see all the issues, you see all the mistakes, you see everything. I don't hide anything from anybody about what I do wrong or what doesn't work because if you don't show the mistakes as well as the successes, then people who fail don't know why or how you failed and they can't learn from your mistakes as well. So that's partially the reason I do these videos to show the good, bad, and ugly of everything. On the uh, initial paint up of the shark in the other tutorial, of course there were frustrating moments. That was a Facebook Live, so that was frustrating moments on that one. Um, I'm going to get these paints real quick and get up some of the areas that I've touched and made mistakes on. Okay, now we've got it. Alright, um, now I'm going to try one more thing before this video ends. We're going to go with the blue on the shirt. And I do believe the blue is a navy blue. And I don't have a navy, navy blue color here. But what I do have is a cerulean blue. Which, if lightly sprayed enough, will work. And that's what I'm going to try. This is a detail cerulean blue. Cerulean. Sorry, cerulean blue. That's like eye blue color. And the thing about Creatix colors, when they come out, and they're done lightly, they actually come out a light color, and then you spray darker or more to get a dark color. But the effect here is to see if we can't get a light spray of blue for a shirt on here. Oh, and it's coming out black. That's almost too dark. We don't want that. Try this again. Move it out, card, from the out.
just try. I'm going to block this a little bit here. Where just glue is just a little too heavy in one spot. So, so far, it'll dry. And when it dries, you can go back in there and darken it, lighten it, whatever you want to do. So, the reason I like airbrushing so much is because it eliminates brush strokes. Uh, you can come up with some really neat, nice textures. And uh, depending on the model accents, you can come up with nice textures and stuff like that. Um, as I said, this is not going to be a clean, neat model. Um, there were effects and stuff that I would put on this model. Uh, in the shirt and stuff like that. There's some like black and stuff like that. Which, you know, they were working on the boat. So, it would be a dirty situation. So, Quint would not have like a clean dress shirt going in the shark's mouth. So, anything that are mistakes that I've made on this thing could actually benefit the look of the model. But the thing is, is to try to get the same uniform color of blue all the way around. Not like a water effect. We don't want water. We want the same color. All the way around. I have to get high into the check of my color. Okay, so that will be pretty much it for now. Um, I'm going to let this dry a little bit. And then I will probably come back out and finish it off at another time. And if you can see the textures of the shirt and how different paint levels can accent that. Same thing with the pants. Not a flat black, kind of a shading and shadowing effect of that. Of course I have to go back in. I'll end up probably stripping off a lot of the shirt, the jacket, and redoing it. But for now that's just a start. Um, I still have to go in and do a lot of small detailing on the, the bits and bobs like the life jacket, the buoy things, the rope enhancement. Those I think are going to be done by hand. Because uh, I don't have a small enough and fine enough brush for that. But, that's pretty much it. I appreciate you guys watching. As if there are any questions or anything like that or anything I can help with, please leave comments down below and I will be sure to answer them best as I can. Thank you very much.